Hello, boys and girls. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited today. I have a story to share with you, one that I really love. And it's about something that I love to collect um, and learn more about too. So the story that we're gonna to read today is called, What Lives in a Shell? So I want you to think for a minute before we start this book. Um, if you look at the cover, we have a little girl here and she looks like she's out at the beach collecting shells. They're beautiful, aren't they? But in each one of these shells, there's something that was living once. And sometimes when you pick a shell up at the beach, you find that there's still something living in the shell. You should definitely leave those shells at the beach. It's okay to collect the ones that don't have um, a living creature inside. But you know what, boys and girls? You don't have to go to the beach to find animals that live in shells. So maybe you're thinking right now of some animals that you've seen around your home that live in shells. So let's begin. What lives in a shell? Mm, I forgot, I wanted to talk to you about this too. We know that books can be fiction or nonfiction. Okay, so is this a, do you think this is gonna be a story? At first you might think that when you see this little girl. But this book says, let's read and find out. And up at the top, it says science. So this is gonna be a book that's filled with facts. This is gonna teach us. Um, so we call this informational text and it's nonfiction. All right, what lives in a shell? Do you know what this is? It is as hard as a stone, but it is not a stone. It is smooth like glass, but it is not glass. It's hollow inside like a cup, but it is not a cup. It is a shell. An animal made it. The shell was the animal's home. Okay, and I'm gonna go over to this, this picture to so you can see. I'll zoom in a little bit. All right. Tell someone at home if you think you know what this is. You live in a house or in an apartment building. That is your home. Your home keeps you safe and warm. Lots of birds, or excuse me, lots of animals have homes. Birds build nests. Ants make tunnels underground. A bear likes to live in a cave. Okay. You probably noticed it up here at the beginning. Mrs. Nola made a mistake and readers do that. But I was paying attention, so I fixed that mistake and I started over again. Made sure I was focusing. Here is the animal that lives in this kind of shell. It is a land snail. A land snail is born with a tiny shell. As long as the snail lives, it keeps on growing. As the snail grows, the shell grows with it. The shell keeps the snail safe. You can go in and out of your home. You can run to the playground. You can wait outside for the bus. A snail never leaves its home. It takes its home with it wherever it goes. The snail pokes its soft head and its one big foot out of the opening in its shell. It uses its foot to inch along. A snail is slow. Birds like to eat snails. When a bird or other enemy comes around, a snail cannot run away. It pulls its head and foot inside its shell and closes the door. The snail is safe. I have to tell you a little something. I have a connection to this page. I can tell you what's been happening at my house. I planted a new garden and the leaves on so many of my plants have all these a little and medium sized holes. Something is eating the leaves. And I checked with Mr. Adams, who's a gardener too. And he said, you have snails. And he told me how I could try to get rid of them. And I feel badly. I wish a bird would come along maybe and eat them. I don't want to hurt them, but they're hurting my flowers. Other kinds of animals live in shells too. 
Shells come in many shapes, colors, and sizes. Turtles live in shells. A turtle's shell can be bumpy or smooth. Most are rounded on top and flat on the belly. Oh, I love this picture. It shows you the underneath the belly part of the shell. Baby turtles have little shells. As the babies grow bigger, their shells grow bigger. A turtle has four legs. It pokes its legs, head and tail through the opening in its shell. Even though it has four legs, a turtle is slow. Have you ever had a turtle race? If a frog and a turtle were in a race, who do you think would win? What about a cat and a turtle? If a turtle sees a cat, it may be frightened. It may think the cat wants to eat it. A turtle cannot run as fast as a cat. The turtle pulls in its head and legs and tail into its shell. The cat pats the turtle with its paw. The turtle won't come out. It is safe in its shell home. When you go to the seashore, can you find many different kinds of shells? Yes, you can. You may see a crab walking on the sand. A crab has 10 legs. On its front legs are two claws. A hard shell covers its claws and the rest of its body. A crab's shell fits in it like a suit of armor. The armor helps keep the crab safe from enemies. But just as you outgrow your favorite shirt, a crab outgrows its shell. When it gets too tight, the crab pulls itself out. Underneath is a new shell. That was pretty amazing. You may find snails buried in the sand. Some of them do not look much like the land snails. Whelks and conches are types of snails that are found only by the sea. Here are some different kinds of sea snail shells. These ones over here on this side are found near the Pacific Ocean on the Pacific coast. We have a, a dire whelk, a Santa Barbara spindle shell, a Western rib top shell, and a Kellett's whelk. This one is very beautiful. And then over here we have the shells that you would find on the Atlantic coast. And the Atlantic Ocean um, and Atlantic coast is the one that's closer to us, even though it would take quite some time, maybe, I don't know, five, six hours to get there. Have you ever seen a snail shell walking along on crab legs? A hermit crab has hard claws in front, but the back end of its body has a soft shell. Its shell is too soft to keep it safe from enemies. A hermit crab lives in an empty snail shell. After a while, the hermit crab grows too big for his shell, so he looks for a bigger one. Some are too big, some are too small. Kind of sounds like Goldilocks looking for just the right size. Finally, he finds one he likes. He throws away the old shell and crawls into the new one. Now the new shell is his home. The snail shell helps keep him safe. You can look for clam and oyster shells at the beach too. Clams and oysters are animals. They have no legs. They do not have heads or tails. Their bodies are soft, but they are animals. I'll let you zoom up and look at those for a moment. Okay. Clams and oysters grow two hard shells. The top shell and the bottom shell look almost alike. The two shells are connected by a hinge. If we were together, I'd ask you if you know what a hinge is. You might have heard of a hinge before. It's something that helps attach your door to the door frame so that the door can open and close. So think of that. Think of the shell with two, or an animal that has two shells and they open. There's a hinge down here. Scallops also have two shells. Here are some different kinds of scallop shells. Most clams and oysters hardly move at all. They open up their shells to take in food and water. 
They close their shells tightly when enemies are around. Some scallops can swim. A scallop does not swim like a fish though. First it opens its two shells, then it snaps them, them together quickly. This gets the scallop where it wants to go. When you find a shell, carefully look inside. It will probably be empty. If a shell is empty, it may mean the animal has died or it has outgrown the shell and left it behind. If the animal is at home, you can watch it for a while. See if you can tell how it eats. How does it move? What does it do when it feels frightened? It could be a scientist, be an observer. When you go, leave the animal where you found it. Animals are happiest in their natural surroundings. If a shell is empty, you can take it home with you. And it has a little, let's see that symbol right there that's called an asterisk. And there's a little sentence or a sentence over here that goes with it. If you are looking at shells in a state or national park, be sure to ask a ranger or game warden before you take any shells from the park. It might not be allowed. You might have to leave them there. Try to find as many different kinds of shells as you can. Whether the shells you find are big or small, plain or fancy, remember a shell is someone's home. Look at all these animals that live in shells. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed What Lives in a Shell. It was written by Kathleen Widener Zofeld, illustrated by Helen K. Davey. I really did love the words and the illustrations. We learned a lot in this book. So um, Flipgrid will tell you um, what it is that we'd like you to do now that you've listened to this story. Thank you.